What is going on with One Punch Man power scaling? I mean, the series started out with Crab Man monsters terrorizing towns, but now we have like multiversal ninja masters and stuff like that. Kind of leaving you wondering like what the hell are even like pretty powerful characters like the S-Class heroes really supposed to do against forces like this? Forces like the recently introduced Empty Void, being able to like observe multiple dimensions at once and doing dimensional slashes from hyperspace. That stuff's pretty insane. Like what's my boy Tank Top Master are supposed to do about that can't really do much so today we're going to talk about how the power scaling of one punch man has either kind of ruined the series or made it better or why it might not even matter at all i'm going to kind of play devil's advocate on both sides here and then kind of give my full opinion at the very end now, I normally don't touch on power scaling topics because the people that enjoy that stuff tend to go pretty crazy in the comments section. Tons and tons of um actuallys down there. So I usually avoid making videos like this, but I feel like when power scaling starts to like directly influence the course of the story itself, having real lasting repercussions to the story, then I feel like it's something that's worth talking about. Because normally I don't really care if a character is like planetary or universal or fourth dimensional or Yu-Gi-Oh 5Ds whatever you know what i mean i respect people that do some heavy power scaling that's just not for me though but after the most recent chapter of one punch man i just feel like i had to talk about this because the newly introduced big bad empty void honestly blew the top off of what's possible in the series what's possible for characters outside of saitama but first i had this burning question on my mind that i know i would never get answered at least truthfully who wins in a fight between Boros and Garo? Well, thankfully, Talkie let me find out the fun and lazy way. That's because I went on Talkie and went through their over 100,000 characters of different personalities and voice tones and found Garo and Boros themselves. You can even make a phone call to your favorite character or create and build your own character anytime. So I went up to each one of them individually and personally asked them who they think is the strongest. First was Boros. Okay, here we go. If you and Garo ever fought, who would win? Garo probably, since I'm so out of my prime and he's one of the strongest. I'd definitely put up a good fight though. He'd need to go all out. Wow. Wow, so you're gonna give in that easily, huh? Boro shrugs. I'm an honest man. Not afraid to admit when I'm wrong. And I know in my current state, I would lose. Wow, okay. Dang, you're pretty based, Boros. Well, Boros was a lot more humble than I thought he would be, but something told me that that wouldn't be the case with Garo. Alright, Dragon Ball Z Garo, let's go. Who would win in a fight, you or Boros? Me, no question about it, I'm the strongest. Alright, even in your human form. Especially in my human form. The heck? How does that make sense? You wouldn't understand, you're weak, what? Mm, uh, you don't know that, I'm actually kinda tough. Prove it? Oof, uh, nah, it's, it's my off day, I don't wanna get sweaty. Fine, then I'll just assume you're weak. I'm not though. Then why don't you prove me wrong? Oh my god. Uh, because I just ate and I would get a cramp, obviously. So you're scared. I thought you said you're tough. Oh my god. And there we go. We found out that Boros is pretty based and I could beat up Garo in a fight. Confirmed. I got my answers and I have Taki to thank for it. Have tons of fun conversations with your favorite anime characters or even create your own by clicking my link in the description and downloading Taki today. Now, One Punch Man has never really been a series that heavily focuses on a power system or, or power scaling in general. It's actually kind of a spoof of that stuff. After all, the reason why One Punch Man really exists is because it was created to be a parody of these types of series that take power scaling so seriously, or stories where the stakes get completely out of hand, like astronomically high, to where like entire universes are in danger if the good guys lose. Think of Dragon Ball Z or any Marvel movie. One Punch Man was originally one's way of poking fun at that kind of stuff. But we also have to consider that One Punch Man initially started off as like a one-off thing. One never really intended to continue the series. He just thought making a hero that was too strong and was bald would be a pretty funny idea. So he just kind of rolled with it. It wasn't until the series started really picking up traction that hey, One started taking it seriously cool. and planning out storylines, planning out characters, even building entire arcs. That's why it was always kind of interesting how One built this whole world, built this whole series out of something that was supposed to be like a one-off gag project. And as we go throughout the series, something interesting really happens with how powerful the enemies really are. Like, I feel at the very beginning, when One was still kind of considering this as a hobby, not really taking One Punch Man seriously, he was doing this thing where it was kind of like a monster of the week. Like, the first chapter, he's going against Vaccine Man, then after that, it's Crab Lante, then the gigantic colossal beefcake, and so on and so forth. 
The series straight up kicks off that way. I mean, the very first monster that you see is more than likely a high dragon level monster, probably one of the most powerful monsters we've ever seen in the series, even up until now. And then we see Saitama take Vaccine Man out in a single punch, kind of setting the standard for the rest of the series, right? So if you're on the side that argues, no, the power system isn't broken, everything is just fine, you can argue that these unfathomably powerful monsters have been around since the very beginning. And if those monsters didn't affect the story negatively in any way, then why would it get ruined by Empty Void's powers, all the crazy stuff he can do? And to a certain extent, all the crazy stuff that monsterized Garo could do. The series seems to have been created with this stuff kind of baked into it. Like there's going to be ultra powerful villains, ultra powerful monsters. Things are going to get kind of crazy, but at the end of the day is not going to matter because Saitama is the one above all. He is the strongest. So he's going to take care of business no matter what happens. Most stories don't really have that. So that's why One Punch Man is kind of in a unique situation where they can introduce these otherworldly, insanely powerful monsters and adversaries and have it not really affect the plot or make it any worse. And on top of that, I feel like One is really good at setting these overpowered characters up without creating some kind of like narrative issue as to how the good guys are going to defeat them or how the heroes haven't been completely demolished by now by this super powerful threat. One does a really good job of having all these different factors coming into play, making it to where a character as powerful as Monster King Orochi or as Monsterized Garo can kind of operate in the background with other stuff happening in the forefront. So you're not just left thinking this completely broken threat is just hanging around and nothing is happening. Like, how does that make any sense? For the lack of a better phrase, one is really good at detouring and kind of touching on other altercations, other fights, other villains and entertaining the reader as they're building up this super powerful threat. But on the flip side, I could see, especially for the original webcomic readers, having all these new events and having the power scaling seemingly taken up to infinity, I could definitely see why it has some people thinking that the series has gotten worse because of it. Because although One is good at writing these super powerful villains, it still doesn't take away from the fact that as we see how much stronger these villains are getting, it leaves us wondering more and more what the main cast, like what the S-Class heroes can really realistically do. You can kind of argue that it ruins the suspense from chapter to chapter because if you're going into it knowing that the heroes fighting this villain are going to lose like there's absolutely no way they can justifiably win then really what's the point right like let's take this current ninja arc as an example sonic and flashy flash are relatively powerful don't get me wrong but they are nowhere near the level of power of empty void as we just saw in the most recent chapters empty void is capable of casting super powerful genjutsus and he has access to something called the dimensional slash and we got to see it on full display in chapter 201 where we see as sonic and flashy flash attack empty void he warps away into hyperspace and it's revealed that he has the ability to observe parallel worlds essentially having access to an infinite amount of realities and in doing so he's able to do some kind of crazy hand signs and cast massive damage from outside the causality of the universe and if we remember back to saitama zero punch with his fight against garo operating outside of causality essentially means that your attacks are unavoidable or at least uninterrupted and that in itself is inherently super, super powerful. You can even argue that it's broken. Like, what can any character in the series outside of, like, Blast or Saitama really do against this adversary? Really nothing, and that's why we see Blast come in at the end of this chapter, because he's the only one that can take him on one-on-one. -on -one. And if you were really getting into this arc to see what Sonic and Flashy Flash can really do, see how much they've grown since they've been introduced into the series, you're gonna be kind of disappointed because, yeah, sure, they did some really cool stuff against the Heavenly Ninja Party, but against Empty Void, they're likely not going to be able to do anything. And it's mostly going to be like a one-on-one -on -one fight between Blast and Empty Void, which again, I'm sure many of you aren't going to be complaining about because any amount of Blast content is awesome, awesome content. But you can argue that narratively, it kind of weakens the story because we're taking time away from these more relatable and grounded characters to kind of go into some like interdimensional universal business. You know what I mean? Because Blast has his intergalactic team. God's all powerful and he has his disciples, including Empty Void. So there's kind of this like high tier of altercation happening while this seemingly less impactful, less important stuff is happening on the ground. On top of that, a lot of people argue that the fact that all these villains are getting ultra powerful and seeming like every new villain is now at the multiversal level, it's kind of going against what One Punch Man was originally based off of, which is making fun of this kind of stuff. Not taking planet busting villains very seriously, because that's not the point of the story. The point of the story is to have a good laugh, be entertained by the funny altercations between Saitama and super powerful villains, and have almost like this kind of slice of life battle manga crossover, where yeah, there's a ton 
of action, but the main focus on the story is in the development of its characters. And again, having each new villain be this powerful is kind of ruining the stakes of the story, because now every new villain going forward either has to be multiversal level or greater, or they're considered a lesser villain than the ones that came before them. So although Empty Void on paper might be more powerful than Garo, it really doesn't feel like it because he just got quickly introduced as being super powerful, while Garo on the other hand built his way up there. So now that we have these two arguments kind of laid out, I just want to share my opinion really quickly and kind of ask you guys what you think. Let me know what you think about the direction the power scaling has been going for this series, whether or not it's ruined it or improved it, or you're like me and thinks that it really doesn't matter, because that's my honest opinion. I'm not trying to fence it or anything. I genuinely don't think it negatively influences the series at all, because as I kind of argued earlier, the series itself was created with having these like overly powerful monsters in mind. I mean, the main character could essentially do whatever he wants. So why wouldn't it be possible that the villains could do the same? In my opinion, as long as the series still follows what the webcomic laid out for it, and the writing is still as good as it's always been, then I don't see a problem introducing these overpowered characters, as long as they're handled in a way where it's entertaining for the reader. And to this point, I feel like it really has been. I definitely enjoyed the Cosmic Fear Garo stuff, I'm enjoying this new Empty Void stuff, because if you read the webcomic, Saitama off-screen one-shots him and it was very, very unsatisfying for me. So it's pretty refreshing to see Empty Void actually show off what he can do, and I have absolutely no problem with him being able to straight up hop into hyperspace and have access to an unlimited amount of dimensions or whatever he can really do. It's still kind of up in the air the full extent of what his powers are, but I think the way that things are being laid out right now is that there's this like overarching high level battle going on behind the scenes with characters like Blast, Saitama, and hopefully Blast team in the future, and then we have the more grounded storylines and altercations, like the current conflict between the Hero Association and the Neo Heroes, and some of these lesser monsters that are appearing here and there. Those are just some thoughts I had though. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Like I said, very curious to hear your thoughts. That is it for this one though. Have an absolutely wonderful morning, afternoon, evening, whatever. And I'll see you guys in the next video.